in this tutorial i'm going to show you how you can extract a gen sequence from a gen bank file using python and for the particular text what we are going to do is to extract the rpob gen from a bacteria genome and we are going to use the library biopython now whenever you want to extract a sequence a gen sequence then you also need to make sure you have the details stated at hand that's the feature type and then the gen name this details will be given as you write your code so let's hop right into it the first thing we are going to do is to download the gen bank file from the ncbi database i'm also going to leave a link in the description box where you can quickly go and then download it So this is the page. So what we have here is a complete genome for Staphylococcus aureus. And this is the reference genome as well. And so in order to download it, you first go to send to, which is here. Click on it, make sure complete record is checked. When you come to destination, make sure the file is checked. And then when you come to the format, you select GenBank 4 then you click on create file then you'll be asked to download and then you save it where you want to save it so for my case i'm going to save it on the desktop with the default name So download is complete, so we can check the download target directory, which is desktop in this case. So this is my file. So you should also make sure you have the parts and the name that you use to save it at hand. So let's go to the Python terminal to start the analysis. So the next thing after downloading the data is to import your Python library. So in this case, that's how we do it. So from bio import zip io. So after we are done with that, we now define the file path. So where is the file saved? So far path comes in my case this becomes my far path and yours is likely to change so you put the correct one there after setting the far path we now open the gembank file but we also assign that operation to a variable in this case the variable becomes gbobj that's gen bank object. So we say seek IO dot read file path. Then we give the format. So we now read it. So once we are done with that, the next step is to subset all the gens. So that means all features of the type gen will subset it. We begin by giving an empty list which is a gens equals to this empty list. We begin by creating that empty list and after creating that empty list we now use an iteration to get all the gen features. So to do that we issue this statement. So we say for feature in gb obj dot features. And we say if feature dot type is equals to gen, then gens dot append feature. That's how we do it. So after we are done, we can even check how many gens were returned by saying len gens. 
So that gives us this number. That's 2,872. But our interest is in a particular gen, which is the IP will be. So we will now look through the gens and then find the one which has the name IP will be. So to do that, we first define our gen of interest. So gen of interest. In this case, becomes RPOB. So after we define it, we now use the list statement to find the gen. Before we do that, we should also define an empty list, which we call hits. So this hits is where, if we have the gen of interest identified, we will place it in this list. So we create that one as well. So now we proceed with the iteration. So we say for gen in gens, if gen in gen dot qualifiers dot keys. Now the gen dot qualifiers dot keys. Here we are looking for some additional information okay in the gen bank file and that information we are expecting that if it's a gen then we should have this information there and using that information we will now get the IPOB so once we have this statement this if statement we move to the next line so if you have that keys with the name gen there then we prove further to find the name and to do that we say if gen of interest in or let's just use equals to rather to make it simpler it's equals to gen dot qualifiers gen And we give this so if it's there, then hits dot append gen. We can also issue another print statement just to track what is happening if you are dealing with multiple stops. So you can say print gen found. So that means if the IPOB gen is identified, it should print this far so we know what's going on. So we issue the command. So after issuing the command, notice we have this found. So that means there was a hit returned. And we can actually check it also from the hits list we created. So then hit, it gives us one, indicating that we have that gen return and it's only one that was given. So that's good because we have that hit list there. So it's now time to do the extraction of the sequence. And so first of all we assign a name to the heads that was returned so we say i p o b let's use this way it's equals to heads zero so from there there are a number of things we can also do we can even check the length of that sequence we can say length r p o b Sick. Sorry, this one will be done at a later one. We have this, so we have to extract the sequence first. So, to do the extraction, we can say extracted sequence is equals to RPOB.extract. And then we specify the original gen bank objects here that we read here yes yeah, so after we've done the extraction we can now find some information from it okay such as the sequence okay so we can see abstracted sequence Len extracted sequence dot seek that should give us the length. So this is the length of that particular 
10, which is 3 KB. Our focus is to save this gen sequence to a file. And so what we want to do is to also add some additional information to it. So one of the information we can add is the ID. So we can say extracted sequence.id is equals to what RPOB. We can also add a description. So we see extracted sequence dot description is equals to let's say NCTC H three two five two five. Okay, that's a description we just want to add. So after we have all this information, there are a number of things we can do, but I'm going to skip them. One of the things is to even check the GC content. Okay, so let's even do that quickly, and then we can save it just so you know how it's done. So to do that, we have another library we call. So we save from you dot seek utils import gc so we can now say gc content is equals to gc and then we have extracted sequence dot seek okay so that should give us the gc content which is this one. Of course, we can even round this to two decimal places. So we say round DC contents, and then we give the number of decimal places. So that gives us this. So even right from this stage, there are a lot of things we can do, depending on your specific question. Now let's move on to saving it to an output file. So first of all, to save it to an output file, we need to define the file itself and the path. So let's say output file is equals to Slash home slash slash rpob dot faster. We will save it as a faster format. So let's define it as our output file. So after doing that, I, I mean specifying the output file, we now save it finally. So we say seek io dot writes. And here we give these details. So the first is the sequence object itself which in this case is extracted sequence so we say extracted sequence and then we give the output file and then finally we give the format which is faster so once we have this satisfied we now save it so it's indicated one which probably means one sequence has been saved. So now let's go to the desktop to check it. Yeah, so there it is. So let me open it properly here. So this is the faster file. So notice we give the information ID, which is here. Let me zoom in for you. have the ID and then a description as well and so we have this sequence here so from here there are other things you can do but we'll be doing more of these things in subsequent videos so once you have this and that's um, the target that you have achieved so depending on your question you can choose to do blasting or do some additional work with the sequence itself and so it's interesting how we can use Python to perform some of these simple analysis. And so that'll be all for this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next session as well. So the next session, we are going to look at how you can extract several sequences from a Jingbang file. So stay tuned for that, and goodbye.